and it's my pleasure to introduce uh, to the committee Mr. Jeffrey Carlyle. He's the Executive Vice President for Regulatory Affairs and Public Policy for Light Squared. Prior to joining Light Squared, Mr. Carlyle served as Deputy Chief and later Chief of the FCC's Wireline Competition Bureau, where he managed the development of the Commission's broadband policies. He has over a decade of, of experience in telecommunications law. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member, members of the committee, thank you for having me here today to talk to you about Light Squared and GPS. And one thing that is very important to, to understand up front, and uh, the, my colleagues on the panel here are going to uh, very clearly make the case that GPS is important to them. And nobody in my company doubts that one bit. In fact, GPS is crucial to us. We have to have a functioning GPS system in order to coordinate the signals on our network. And the people who bring devices to our network are all going to have GPS devices, uh, GPS receivers built into their devices. So no debate about that GPS is important. It is crucial to the American economy. We use it every day. And it is important to safety of life. Um, there is another important issue, though, that is particularly relevant to this committee. And that is the fact that small businesses suffer today from a lack of choice in their ability to get wireless services. The committee uh, Light Squared is building a network that won't just bring one competitor to the market, but will bring dozens of competitors to the market. We already have over 17 business partners who are waiting for us to have our network ready to go so they can start selling broadband services to end users. The effect of this is to lower, is to enable them to lower prices to end users and small businesses, the people who need it most. Better connectivity and extension of connectivity to rural areas, which historically have been on the short end of the stick when it comes to wireless networks and will definitely be so when it comes to broadband networks. Um, and this is a problem that we have to deal with. Make no mistake, the lack of effective broadband infrastructure uh, makes America 15th in the world in terms of broadband adoption. And why is this important overall? These consume 24 to 25 times more data than a regular cell phone. That was just three to four years ago uh, before that started to be the effect. In less than two years, we will have too many devices and too little spectrum. We are the only realistic new source of spectrum within that time frame. And let's be clear, there will always be issues with existing uses of spectrum when you have a new network being built. With 700 megahertz, which was another band, it was wireless microphones. With here, it is GPS. With 800 megahertz, several years back, it was public safety. These issues can be solved. If we can't solve them, we aren't going to be able to provide services to the people who need them. And the real loser on that will be small businesses. They are the ones whose bottom line get hit the worst. Not in my backyard does not work in spectrum. There is not one piece of spectrum in, in the whole range that you can pick that will not have some sort of incumbent issue. So how do we uh, solve the issue? I think, unfortunately, a lot of the commentary that you hear about this conflates our old proposal of starting in the spectrum closest to GPS with the proposals we have on the table now, where, we're, where we will uh, offer our service on the spectrum farthest away. And this will address the issue for over 99 percent of GPS devices simply by physics. They don't look that far down into our spectrum. And that covers cellular devices, personal navigation devices. It covers aviation devices. And uh, to show that effect, uh, the government testing itself, which was separate from the industry testing on this, concluded that initial test results demonstrated that some applications, for example, aviation, were able to operate with little to no degradation when we were operating on the spectrum farthest away from GPS. That has been established for months now. So what are we left with? We are left with precision devices. That's so we are going from 400 million devices across the country to something less than 750,000, perhaps as few as 100,000. These are the ones that are designed to get to centimeter level accuracy and are used in agriculture, surveying and construction. And I think there is room for skepticism in terms of the, of the claims as to how hard this issue is to solve. For months now, we have heard about there is not enough room in the devices. It would take a backpack size filter to fix it. It would cost too much. It is going to take too long. Uh, it is going to take years and billions of dollars. Well, I have a precision device right here, actually. It is from an unnamed manufacturer. We bought it on eBay. It is right there. As you will see, 
when you take the dome off, there is room in this device, and this is the antenna. This is where you place the filter for the antenna. It is right here. It is this little square here. The filter that we have developed in a matter of days at a cost of $6 per unit is right here. Now, our solution isn't going to be a uh, solution for every receiver. Many receiver manufacturers will, come up to, will have to come up with their own solutions. But what this is is a proof of three concepts. It can be done, it can be done inexpensively, and it can be done quickly. I also think the issue of uh, bearing the cost for this, uh, for this proposal is also something that is misunderstood. Just last August in 2010, Garmin issued a voluntary recall of 1.2 million GPS receivers that had battery issues. Their stock price declined about a cent the day they, offered, they, they announced that. So this is an issue that comes up in private industry all the time. Manufacturers who have put devices out there that are subject to this kind of interference when they shouldn't be uh, should bear some of the responsibility, and we have already borne a significant amount of the cost of addressing the issue for hundreds of millions of devices. And I look forward to receiving your questions. Thank you.